Hello, I'm Commander Wiggy B. This is Elite Dangerous version 3.2.1. Welcome to my bug hunting do's and don'ts tutorial. As excellent tactical explanations already exist, I've decided to give this video a broader focus. The intention is to give examples of the challenges you'll encounter while you learn to fight the bugs. At this point, I've recorded over 100 Thargoid battles. Many of my initial attempts were unsuccessful, and by now I'm sure that I've made every mistake that it's possible to make. Using this back catalogue of calamity, I'll be attempting to demonstrate where I went wrong, and then explain how the standard combat techniques mitigate each threat. Hopefully this will help commanders move from novice to seasoned bug hunters more gracefully than I did. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that my preference is for fast and manoeuvrable ships over the big slow sluggers. I'll therefore be using the zoom and boom style of bug hunting during this video. This suits smaller ships like the Ferdelands, Fass and Crate. Many of the techniques are transferable to larger ships, but I really don't enjoy flying them. The tactics I'll be using in this video were largely developed by the commanders from the Anti-Xeno Initiative. In particular, videos from experts like Gluttony Fang, Maligno and Schwinky really helped me get to grips with the various mechanics. I also received a lot of support from the members of the Pixel Bandit's Thargoid Defence Force, so many thanks to all those guys. I've linked a few of my favourite tutorial and example videos, the AXI Discord server and the Canon Research Xeno Intel Agency pages in the description. I can highly recommend them all. To save time, I'm not going to do a loadout walkthrough in this video. Instead, I've left a link to my ever-evolving build in the description. Bug hunting is a huge and technical topic, so this video is a bit longer than my usual 15 minutes. To make life easier, I've left quick links to the various topics down below, so you can dip in and out. Ok, so I want to start off with the most important skill in Xeno combat. How to make your escape. When flying solo, bug hunts are a cat and mouse game, with many chances to come unstuck. Make a mistake and the results can be brutal. Deciding when to make a tactical retreat is important if you want to avoid the rebuy screen. The main difficulty is that unlike human ships, Thargoid interceptors mass lock you against both low wake and high wake jumps up to a range of about 5 kilometers. Interceptors are also fast, so engaging in a drag race can be challenging. Fortunately, they are rather slow to turn and accelerate. If you're struggling to get away, hit FA off, flip 180 and then boost straight towards them. So long as you're not critically low, you can ignore the incoming fire and plough straight on through. Once out the other side, you'll rapidly gain distance while the bug turns and follows. You should be able to jump out within seconds. Just be careful not to face plant when you do your flight. The bugs do tend to move towards you. Power priority settings are also key to escape. Thargoids love to massacre modules, with the power plant being a firm favourite. Always fit at least one module reinforcement. Then make sure you set your power priorities so that your drives, distributor, sensors and frame shift are priority one. Everything else should be two or above. Make sure that the total load in priority one is less than 40% of your total capacity. Do this and you'll be able to run after your power plant gets hit. Don't do it, and you'll get a ringside seat while your ship undergoes a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Next up is identification. When I began my bug hunt journey, I found it quite challenging to differentiate between the different classes of interceptor. The bug on screen now is the Cyclops variant. This is generally light brown in colour, and is by far the easiest to fight. The second type of interceptor is the Basilisk. This variant is much darker in colour and has red highlights. It's also considerably tougher than the Cyclops. I would recommend practicing and mastering Cyclops battles before attempting to solo a Basilisk. The third type is the Medusa. This variant is virtually black and has vicious looking crimson thorns at the end of its petals. The Medusa is a significant handful, even in a wing. I'm yet to bag one, but continue to improve with each attempt. I'll keep you posted. Finally, we have the Hydra. As of filming, this variant has only been briefly glimpsed by a few commanders. This clip comes from Commander Bess Kolesnikov, and I've linked the source video below. It's notable that the Hydra's hearts appear to be on the second tier of petals, and therefore hidden when it's facing you. A solo kill may be extremely challenging as a result. Now on to a fight. I'm currently dropping into a non-human signal source threat 5. Unless the system has been prepared for attack, these usually spawn a Cyclops. If you're carrying a Xenoscanner, the encounter begins with a mutual sniffing session. Without a scan, you'll have to confirm the type of bug by eye, and you won't be able to sub-target hearts. Don't worry, you can still hit them though. 
If you're not carrying a scanner at all, then you'll also be unable to tell the number of Thargons remaining in the swarm. Once introductions are over, it's time to make like John Wick. Start by shooting the bug centre mass. After a few shots, you'll exert one of the hearts, indicated by the bright red spot. This is now your target. One well-placed shot and the petal will drop. And then it's time to run. Before we move on, now is a good time to show the difference in difficulty between the classes of Interceptor. On a good day, and using Gauss cannons, it will take at least three shots to take down the first heart of a Cyclops. Basilisks are considerably tougher. This one took four shots to exert the heart, and another two before I destroyed it. The Medusa variant is considerably stronger than even the Basilisk. Swarm size also increases between the classes. A Cyclops releases a 32 Thargon Swarm. The Basilisk produces 64 and the Medusa a devastating 96. Due to its extreme damage handling capability, it took me 7 shots on my entire weapon capacitor before I was able to exert the first part. This left more than enough time for the bug to release its swarm and to start shooting before it close off the kill. Accuracy is key when taking out the first half, and nailing your shots takes practice, particularly when sniping. Give a Cyclops or Basilisk enough time and you will see a similar, if less damaging, response from one of them. As the start of a fight is a good place for direct comparison, I'd also like to quickly showcase the remaining Guardian weapons. Up to now, I've been using the Gauss Cannon, which is similar to the Human Railgun. It hits hard enough to excite hearts and is great for module sniping but only after a lot of practice. On the downside, it does tend to cook your ship when three or four are fired together repeatedly. So next up we have the Shard Cannon. This is essentially a reskinned frag cannon that can damage Thargoids. As with the human weapon, the Shard is devastating up close range, but rapidly loses effectiveness when your range increases. Being an area effect weapon, they're relatively easy to module snipe with, even when you don't sub-target. This is providing you can stay close, and here lies their main drawback. Thargoids are deadly at close range, and have several defence mechanisms as you'll see later. Staying close enough to maximise damage leaves you highly vulnerable. For me, they are making good anti-cyclops weapons, but are far less effective against basilisks than do so. But maybe that's just my flying style. The final guardian weapon is the plasma charger. This differs from human plasma weapons in that it must be charged by holding the trigger. It then launches when you let go. While being held at full power, it slowly drains the weapon capacitor. If you lose sight of your target, I'd recommend letting go of any charged rounds, or you'll be out of weapon power for subsequent shots. I found the plasma charger to be an effective weapon for exciting hearts on a cyclops. Two medium and two large chargers take a single volley to excite a cyclops heart. Against a basilisk, it took me four volleys. The problem with this weapon is when it comes to sniping the hearts. Sub-targeting is a must if you hope to land your shots. This forces you to fit a Xeno scanner and complete a full scan before attacking. Due to the low projectile velocity, you'll also need to fire from very close range. If you don't, the target will have changed direction by the time your shot lands, and you'll often miss the heart. Clearly, close up is a dangerous place to be, unless you're using hit and run flybys. In the example clips, it took me three volleys to take down the Cyclops heart, and seven for the Basilisk. In both cases, the bug had released its swarm and was returning fire before I could complete my attack. Obviously commanders are not limited to single type loadouts, and these weapons can be combined with Gauss cannons in hybrid setups. The Shard-Gauss combo seems to be used reasonably regularly by commanders. Personally, I'll be sticking with a full Gauss setup, as I've been flying with rails and hammers for years. Once the first heart is down, it's time to get some distance. Hit boost immediately. If you're in close, fly straight past. If you're more than 1k away, or the bug is retreating away from you, turn 90 degrees and then boost, boost, boost. As when trying to escape, you're wanting to make it change course and exploit the interceptor's relatively poor acceleration. If you find that you're not pulling away, chuck a handbrake turn and fly past again. The key to the zoom and boom tactic is to segment the fight so that you're either dealing with the swarm, fighting the bug directly, or repairing and rearming in safety. Interceptors can hit you with their primary weapon from up to 3k, so you want to pull out at least this much distance as fast as possible. So what happens if you don't get away fast enough? After you destroy a heart, the bug raises its temporary panic shield. 
It then tries to come after you with a lightning attack. In this example, the club was already retreating away from me when I boosted, so I didn't gain the distance I expected. Lightning has a range of about 800 metres and has several negative effects. First, it acts like a tractor beam to stop you retreating and then pull you in. It is devastating to shields and modules, and lastly, it causes a range of random module malfunctions. Here it rebooted my life support and heat sinks. It may also have popped my cargo hatch, but that could also just be me mashing buttons. There is little you can do once caught, other than try to get behind the bug or look for a safe escape path once the attack is over. Once you're out of range of the interceptor, keep boosting until you're at least 6.5 clicks away. A top speed that's well over 500 helps here. Now it's time to deal with the swarm. Boost while facing away from the bug. Hit FA off and then flip round to face. You should now be coasting backwards at high speed, usually known as a reverse ski manoeuvre. Select the swarm and switch fire groups to your remote release flak launcher. One is all you need. If you're starting out against Cyclops and finding the swarm the hardest part, don't be afraid to fit a second until you get the hang of it. If you're using two, fit them as far apart as possible to maximise the area covered by the blast. When you fire at the swarm, the trigger must be held down until the projectile arrives at its target. To gauge distance, the launcher produces a rising tone as the round approaches. A clear tone like this means that the target has been reached and the trigger can be released to detonate the flak. If you don't hear a tone, then the shell has either been detonated too early or was off target. Depending on how far the swarm is from you will affect how you deal with it. Anything above about 6k is out of range. Between 6k and 4k, the swarm will generally fly straight towards you, with an occasional zigzag thrown in. However, you're unlikely to pull this much distance on the first heart. Between 4k and 2k, the swarm will S continuously. Shooting directly at the aiming mark rarely works, in my experience, as the swarm will have changed direction before the shot reaches them. Instead, I wait for a new swing, and then place my shot midway between the swarm and the aiming mark. Don't worry if you miss, just keep pumping out the shots. Killing the swarm quickly is important. Below 2k, the swarm will begin to fire at you. At this point, I tend to start my ship spinning and apply down thrust. This makes me fly in a spiral and most of the fire passes harmlessly by. At this range, I also tend to aim more or less directly for the swarm, rather than at the aiming mark. After the first swarm is destroyed, the bug will immediately deploy a second one. Interceptors produce one swarm when engaged, and then an additional swarm for every heart lost. If the bug already has a swarm out when a heart is destroyed, then the new swarm remains queued up, ready to go once the active swarm has been annihilated. Consequently, commanders must kill two swarms between hearts 1 and 2. If you're fighting a Cyclops or a Medusa, then you can just wait for the second swarm to attack, as it will be faster than the bug. To be on the safe side, always do a check to see how far behind the interceptor is. If it's less than 6k away, then you may want to turn and increase your distance. If you're fighting a basilisk, then the bug will likely catch up while you deal with the first swarm. The second swarm will also be unable to overtake it when it finally spawns. As a result, you'll need to do a quick flyby between the swarms. If not, you'll be fighting both at once. If you're having trouble killing the first heart quickly, or if dealing with two swarms in a row is too much, it's possible to start the fight in a different way. Shoot the bug once to kick things off, and then immediately boost away to 6k. You're then free to deal with the first swarm before you try to kill the first heart. Once it's destroyed, you'll only have to deal with a single swarm before heart 2, as you've already cleared the queue. Ok, now it's time for an attack run. Before you go, make sure that you select the appropriate fire group, set your pips, and target the bug so you have a distance measurement. Turn flight assist back on if you want, and then boost towards the bug. When you get up close, the interceptor will immediately turn yellow and attempt a lightning attack. This can be dealt with using a close flyby. If you pass the bug and keep going until you're over 800 metres away, the lightning attempt will fail. The danger is over once the bug's petals change back to red. When within firing range, the principal defensive tactics against interceptors are avoid flying straight towards them and stay cold. Keeping your temperature below 24% will stop the bug's targeting system from adjusting for your motion. Instead, they will fire towards your current position. If you're flying straight at it, then this won't help much. However, apply enough vertical or lateral thrust while facing a bug and its shots will miss. Ideally, you want to orbit around the target while keeping your weapons trained on it. 
The same result can also be achieved using FA off, and this is the technique that many top bug hunters prefer. They can simply drift past while facing the target without getting hit. I'm about as dangerous as a toddler with a nerf gun when FA off, so I tend to use thrusters instead. Staying cold makes a huge difference to incoming fire. Even with an active heatsink, firing four gauss cannons will spike a ship's heat above 24%. To mitigate this, I tend to fire my cannons in alternate pairs. I also activate a new heatsink as soon as I hear the previous one deploy. As before, once the heart is down, boost off to a safe distance. If you're in a slower ship, this is also an appropriate time to deploy a fighter to act as a distraction. Until the new swarm deploys, try and stay between 4 and 6k from the interceptor. As soon as the swarm appears, you're good to extend your lead over the bug to 7 or 8k before hitting FA off and firing your flag. If you race too far ahead before it spawns, the swarm may end up behind the flower ship and you'll need to do a flyby to avoid fighting them both together. So what happens when an attack run doesn't go to plan? Until you're killing hearts efficiently, straying within 800 metres of the bug and then being caught by further lightning attacks will be an ever-present danger. If you're close to maximum range and have a good bit of momentum, it's possible to break free. You can also break free by quickly getting to the side or behind the bug, essentially getting out of its fire arc. Either way, make sure you retreat beyond 1k to avoid a second attack. If you're unable to escape immediately, you'll be brought to a halt and then dragged in front of its weapons. This is a double-edged sword, as the interceptor will also be in front of yours. Keep your head and take this opportunity to pump as many rounds into the bug as possible to exert the next heart and then destroy it. To avoid lightning altogether, try and stay between 1 and 2k range at all times. If you're using shards and need to come in closer, use flyby attacks to minimise your time in the danger area. Whatever you do, don't camp close to the bug unless you're prepared to tank out its attack. The next problem is actually sniping the hearts themselves. If you're not used to rails or fixed weapons, then this will be a challenge. Sub-targeting the exerted heart does make it easier, particularly when the bug turns away from you. Set a keybind if you don't need to use the side menu. Firing from the right distance also helps. For Gauss, I find that 1k to 1.5k is the easiest range. Further out and the shot is really hard, closer in and the bug can move too fast to track. Firing heat sinks to stay cold and using down thrust to avoid incoming fire makes the snipe even harder, but does reduce the damage you take. I'd suggest forgetting these extras to begin with. Just concentrate on the shot, block out everything else. You can deal with your broken shields and the dashboard fire once the heart is down. So far I've not commented on why it's important to destroy the swarm. It's entirely possible to kill bugs while totally ignoring their offspring. However, when left unchecked, the swarm will deal considerably more damage than the interceptor itself. A partially diminished swarm with more than three members will also be replenished to full strength at regular intervals. At close range, individual Thargons can morph into missiles and suicide onto your ship. If your shields are down, the explosions will shred your hull and modules and may knock out your drives. And that leads us nicely onto the enrage mechanic. If you fail to kill a heart after more than seven minutes, the Thargoid will become enraged. At this point it will release an additional highly aggressive swarm that will be continuously replenished regardless of how many you kill. Stay close for too long and the whole group will morph into missiles and tear your ship apart. The interceptor will also randomly fire caustic missiles at you. The only way to reset a Thargoid's behaviour is to destroy a heart, which is easier said than done in this move. Now that we've dealt with tragedy, let's move back to success. After each heart is destroyed, the bug will employ a range of countermeasures. To begin with, it will pop its panic shield. Then it will fire caustic seeker missiles at you if you stay within range. The missiles are easy to outrun, even in a conda, and their fuel runs out quickly. So long as you're boosting away from the bug, you should be fine. In the event that you do get hit, the caustic payload will eat your hull until dealt with. The easiest way to remove it is to briefly overheat your ship above 200%. When it's safe to do so, Hit silent running and fire your weapons until you hit the right temperature. As soon as the danger is neutralised, drop one, or even better, two heat sinks to bring your temperature down. After the second to last heart, interceptors will also attempt to disable your ship using their shutdown field. If successful, they will then follow up with caustic missiles, bar bombs, and main gun. Not a good combination for a ship that's dead in the water. There are three defences against this. 
The most obvious is to fit a shutdown field neutralizer. After you hear the warning message, set four pips to systems, select your neutralizer fire group, and then pause for a couple of seconds. Charge the neutralizer and hold until after the field has passed over the ship. Be careful though, charge too early and your sys cap will drain flat, causing the neutralizer to fire early and ineffectively. The second option is to use speed. As soon as you hear the alert, hit FA off and boost 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 in a straight line away from the bug. Four pips to shields may also be advisable. When the field hits, your ship will be disabled, but will continue to coast at high speed. Keep flight assist on and you'll come to a dead stop. With a bit of luck, your ship will reboot long before the bug can catch you up. As a bonus, this strategy frees up a utility slot for something more useful. The final strategy is best of all, and simply involves distance. If you're fast enough out of the blocks, you'll have put so much distance between yourself and the guide that it won't bother with the pulse at all. Avoiding damage when fighting bugs is very challenging, and requires the use of consumables. Heat sinks tend to be cooked at a crazy rate, and flak may run low too. You're also very likely to lose your shields and take internal damage when you do. The lull in activity between hearts is a perfect time to synthesise new items. If you have an AFMU fitted, you can also repair a crazed canopy, renew your module reinforcements, and fix anything else that needs attention. Just remember to turn everything back on again before your next attack run. While we're talking about the ship's canopy, I'd highly recommend that you turn on the screen center dot in the controls menu. In the event that your screen pops, you'll still be able to aim Gauss cannons using the dot. This can easily be the difference between a win and a retreat. One final thing before we go in for the kill. With practice, you'll get good at obliterating the swarm, and it's likely that the bug's panic shields will still be up when you're repaired and ready to go again. I'd strongly suggest waiting it out. You don't have to, but if you attack too soon, you'll just be wasting heat sinks and ammo, and putting your ship in harm's way unnecessarily. Once the final heart is down, you've got a 3 second gap before the panic shield comes back up. It's possible to close the deal at this point, but I tend to wait. Any damage you do before the shield activates won't regenerate. Once you deal with the final swarm and have waited out the shield, the killing blows should be easy. With payouts of 2 million for a cyclops and 6 million for a basilisk, bug hunting can even be lucrative once you've got the hang of it. So that's it for this video, which has been three months in the making. As always, please leave a like and a comment if you found it useful. If not, constructive criticism will be gratefully received. 07 Commanders, go give the bugs hell.